3,500 years ago, the ambience here was quite different. It was incredibly quiet. This silence was only disturbed by events like the funeral of Tutankhamun. We have to admit that he was king. The question is, when did he get this title? Nefertiti, she could be his enemy. And this summarizes the restoration of the religion from Aten to Amun. Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for joining me today about the new PBS special, um, Allies and Enemies. 100 years of King Tut. I can't believe it's been a century. Yes, it has been, indeed. <laughs> well, 100 years since the discovery of King Tut's tomb, how has history benefited since that time? Uh, Tutankhamun is a very exciting figure because he's always being reinvented and uh, new discoveries are made, new theories are, uh, scholars come up with new theories, so his history is constantly being rewritten, which makes it much more exciting. And how much have we learned about the boy king in one century? Have there been any specific questions answered since then? So many questions have been answered, but they're also more questions being raised. So, for example, one of the questions that's uh, being answered is, uh, was he murdered? Uh, most scholars don't, do not believe he was murdered. He probably died from a leg injury. Uh, uh, other questions that are, that are being raised are, was his tomb originally made for him or not? And that's something that will be discussed in the documentary. Uh, because he died prematurely, so the theory is that he was buried in a higher official's tomb because his was not ready, so that's a theory. Uh, who were his parents? And now there's also a theory that uh, his tomb was originally Nefertiti's and that uh, her tomb is yet to be discovered behind the wall, one of the walls of, of Tutankhamun's tomb, so that's another thing that people are questioning right now. And can you tell us about the king's list? Uh, king Tut's name is missing. Was he even a pharaoh? He was a pharaoh, uh, but his name is indeed missing from the king list because his father, Akhnaten, uh, was uh, regarded after his death as a heretic. Uh, he revolutionized Egyptian religion. He got rid of all the gods and worshipped the sun disk, the Aten. Uh, moved the capital of Egypt to Middle Egypt, which was never the capital before and never will be again, and uh, revolutionized art. So the king, instead of being this idealized figure, was represented with, you know, both male and female characteristics and looking a bit strange with a very long face and, and uh, knobby chin and, you know, thing not, not very ideal, <laughs> idealized. So when he died, uh, Tutankhamun, during his reign, they went back to the traditional religion and moved the capital back. So his entire line became taboo after Tutankhamun died, and uh, Tutankhamun and his family were removed from the king lists and from history. And technology has come in, in discovering more um, questions and answers about King Tut. You use com computer topography. You use scanning technology, too. How has that changed the game? It's changing the game because some people believe there is uh, a, that uh, Nefertiti's tomb is behind uh, the walls of Tutankhamun. So that's something that's the te a technology that's being used. Uh, of course, his uh, mummy is being explored using uh, CT scanning and DNA. Uh, a lot is uh, a lot of technology is being used in his uh, in uh, in the study of Tutankhamun, and in this documentary we will see a reconstruction of he, what he probably looked like when he was alive, which is very different from the other reconstructions that we know about. And in terms of Egyptian culture, you know, uh, available for the viewing public for many many years, do you think King Tut is the greatest Egyptian cultural export to the world? It is one of them. Yes, definitely. Um, but it's also important to realize that Tutankhamun was not a very important uh, figure in Egyptian history. Uh, the reason he's so famous is that his tomb was found intact. Other kings, their tombs were robbed since antiquity. So uh, Ramses II, for example, who, who had a very long reign and a very large tomb, his tomb was probably much more impressive than uh, Tutankhamun's. Seti I, Ramses the uh, the second's father, his tomb was, art, from an artistic point of view, uh, gorgeous. So 
There are much more impressive tombs, but his is the most famous because it was found intact. Now, keeping treasures in Egypt, is grave robbing still a problem or desecration still a problem uh, in the world of archaeology today? Of course, everywhere. And that's why documentaries are very important because they raise awareness about the importance of, uh, of history and, uh, and uh, the importance of ancient Egyptian artifacts. And uh, the thing is that uh, in Egypt, we, we've produced also an Egyptian documentary, and that's helping to raise awareness about the importance of uh, why, it, why it's not a good idea to uh, loot and uh, that you're not rob just robbing the artifacts, you're robbing history, you're robbing humanity of its history, historical knowledge that is lost forever when you loot. And finally today, doctor, as an archaeologist, do you have a favorite artifact in your career that you've discovered or that's a, a personal favorite? I have many personal favorites, but one of my favorites is uh, a small, a very tiny fragment of limestone that uh, the, the artists who built the tombs and decorated them in the Valley of the Kings was uh, drawing on, sketching. It's a it's an image of a lute player, a nude lute player, and it's the way it's drawn is very different from the way we see ancient Egyptian art because we we can recognize ancient Egyptian art because it's governed by very strict rules. But this drawing shows us that the ancient Egyptians could draw more realistically, but they didn't for religious uh, or you know the different reasons that governed how they produced art at the time. Well, doctor, thank you for your passion and thank you for this incredible discovery. I, I love history and I love uh, uh, you're a modern Indiana Jones. So thank you so much for joining me today mm -hmm. and allies and enemies on PBS and uh, best of luck to you and all your future discoveries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy the documentary.